Hey there and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 review. And today we'll be talking about the latest episode to drop, Multiplication. Which follows off from the immediate aftermath of the previous episode, Evolution, where our heroes made a mockery out of Gabe once again when he tried to use time travel. Now, if you watched my trailer breakdown for this episode, you'd probably know that whilst I was pretty hyped to get another episode so soon after the first one released, I was a bit wary for the potential for extreme plot armor, simply because the villains seemed so strong, and it was just Ladybug and Cat Noir fighting on their own with no real power up. So, I kind of expected them to win via bullshit means, and I mean they kinda do, but more on that later. Because now, we have an episode to pick apart, like the vultures that we are. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So we start off the episode with Ladybug and Cat Noir watching a news report of Monarch flexing on Paris, telling everybody how he outplayed Ladybug and Cat Noir and stole the majority of the Miraculouses, before we cut to a shot of our gang of heroes running across a building top. And here, Ladybug pauses the video and zooms in on Felix, who was using the Dog Miraculous at the time, and explains to Cat Noir how she got bamboozled, and that Felix's betrayal resulted in them losing all of the Miraculouses. She also shows us that, for some reason, Felix has a Wikipedia page. Like, I get the kid seems to be a child prodigy, but he has a Wikipedia page? Really? Also, his photo on that page seems to be a still from the episode that he's introduced in. And he's inside Adrian's house in that photo. Like, how would the wiki editors possibly have access to this? Does Gabe have hidden cameras in his house from which he publishes photos of anybody who visits? Is this his side hustle? <laughs> who knows? Anyway, Cat Noir pieces together that Felix and Monarch must actually know each other personally because they met up. And honestly, to me at least, this very quickly narrows down the search field quite a lot. But before they can follow up with that particular tangent, Sue Han arrives to yell at them for losing the Miraculouses, and you know what? Fair enough. They gave him a whole speech about how they were going to be the best choice to protect the Miraculouses instead of him, and only a few months later, we see that they've lost all but three. I would also be deeply pissed off if I was Sue Han, but of course, instead of acknowledging this, they flip it around. The classic manipulator tactic. Why are you angry about this thing that's very reasonable to be angry about? If you ask me, you're being very unhelpful. Why would you treat us like this? Etc, etc. And then the dude breaks down and claims all responsibility because he got sucked into the modern world of designer shoes and cat videos. And you know what though? This dude was a monk from the 1800s. Cut him some slack about being excited about the modern world. I really can't believe that Ladybug and Cat Noir somehow managed to convince him that this was all his fault. I mean, yeah, Ladybug got screwed over, but he also has a point. She was in charge, and the buck should stop with her. She shouldn't be parceling off blame. Anyway, the dude eventually pulls himself together, and he leaves to go to the temple to get some backup. So, I'm guessing this means we're going to see more monks turning up with some more Miraculouses, maybe, to help out. I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, like Cat Noir said, it seems like he's going to be jumping all the way to Tibet, so we probably won't be seeing him anytime soon. Our heroes then power up their flight suits and decide to fly to London to abduct Felix and find out what he knows about Monarch. And on that trip, we learn a little bit about Felix. The first thing is that he's the son of an American billionaire and a French aristocrat, so that means Emily would also be an aristocrat. Just a cool tidbit, I guess. Oh, and he's also skilled in kung fu, equestrian, and chess, and he's already graduated high school, so aside from his terrible personality and lacking social skills, he seems to be the perfect specimen. Also, how does this kid have a Wikipedia photo, and yet his billionaire father somehow doesn't? This is like Donald Trump Jr. having a more fleshed out page than Donald Sr. He just doesn't compute. Anyway, they speak to Amelie, who tells them that she hasn't seen Felix and that Gabe's told her that he didn't turn up at the house, so she's quite worried. And quite lying. Because this is quite obviously bullshit, and she's covering for him, but whatever, she plays up the concerned mother act to... Cosmo Bug and Astro Cat? I mean, did they seriously introduce themselves as that? Or does everybody just memorize the different names that each costume has, just in case? Hilariously, they then give up their search completely after one failure, and then start to even doubt that Felix betrayed them at all. That maybe he's just another one of Monarch's victims. Jesus. They need to work on their detective skills. I guarantee he was in his bedroom. Batman is shaking his head all the way from Gotham City. So they both return to their respective homes and each have their own sad flashback moment. With Marinette thinking about all the fun the Kwamis used to have with her and then calling Alia to sleep over so she has someone to vent to, besides 
Tiki, obviously, and Adrian thinking about how he let Felix manipulate him and that he should have just listened to Marinette's advice about toughening up and telling his dad to shove the modeling career up his ass. And so he does, and his dad doesn't even care. This scene was one of the show's most anticlimactic moments, in a good way. We were all prepared for this big blow up argument, but it never comes. He doesn't even look at him, he just gives him the old, yeah kid, sure, whatever you want. And it was actually quite funny. I really enjoyed the way they went about this scene. It was unexpected, but really good. Meanwhile, Marinette breaks down to Alia, talking about how it's all her fault that Monarchs got all the Miraculouses because she's the one that made the mistake and mixed up Felix and Adrian. And thus, she's the one who's accountable. Poor Su Han, you could have told him this. He would have appreciated it. But anyway, Alia, quite reasonably in my opinion, tells her that this is a bullshit way to look at things. They're basically twins, and it'd be difficult to tell them apart in the context that she encountered them, since he was dressed and acted like Adrian would. Last time, she only realized who he was because he started acting like a creeper, and nobody else pieced it together even after the mean message he left. So, yeah. I'm firmly in the Marinette did nothing wrong in this camp. Alia then keeps trying to reassure her that she does know the true Adrian and tries to pump her up by talking about all the important things they've done together before bringing up the cringiest thing that Marinette's ever done in her life and trying to frame it as a positive when she kissed him thinking he was a statue. Seriously? That's one of those moments where you have to pause the episode after it happens so you can calm yourself down and reassure yourself that these characters aren't real. It didn't happen. They can't hurt you anymore. Of course, naturally, Marinette disagrees with Alia in this instance and tells her no, that was cringe, May. This then leads to her swearing off Adrian until Monarch is defeated, and Alia hits her with the old, sure, mate. Sure. And I agree with that. I think this is going to last an episode or two at best. Of course, at this point, Adrian calls and Marinette refuses to answer. And so Alia does what every good friend would do in this context and tries to force her hand by answering the phone, before being forced to tell him that Marinette's not here right now. Ugh. And during this weird exchange, it comes out that Adrian stood up to his dad and has quit being a model, which gets Marinette to answer the phone after all and get all excited, before he thanks her for being his friend in a very sweet scene. Aw, how nice. And then he kind of flirts with her in my opinion, or at the very least he shows romantic interest. But Marinette of course denies everything, and Alia, like all of us, has a mental breakdown. And I don't think she can be blamed for that. But meanwhile, over at Adrian's house, Adrian doesn't even bother to deny anything to Plague when he calls him out and says she's no longer just a friend. Looks like things are going to be heating up over the next few episodes. Natalie then arrives home and avoids Gabe whilst going to check on Adrian in his room and big time mum vibes here. So I'm guessing a lot of her screen time this season's going to be about this I think? Trying to reconnect with Adrian? Is she going to die? Hope not. I'm too soft for that kind of thing. Don't do it. Also though, Walking into a teenage boy's room in the middle of the night, that's a big risk. Kid doesn't even sleep with the blankets on. Lucky bothered with pyjamas that night, eh? And what if he woke up and she's just lingering in his room with the light off? I'd be pretty freaked out. Moving on though, we then head to the school where Alex's dad is announcing that she's traveling through time protecting the bunny miraculous and she's not going to be coming back until Monarch's defeated. At which point, the teachers try to hype everybody up to support the heroes. But Milen is scared. And Max doesn't do a great job of reassuring everybody by giving a percentage breakdown of how likely Monarch is of winning. Pfft, seriously, what the hell's wrong with this kid? Luckily though, Nino tells him to sit his ass down and to stop causing a panic. And then the whole class joins in to get pumped up to show Monarch that they're not afraid. And yet honestly, speak for yourself about that. If I lived in this world, I would be moving to a different city. I do not have the desire to live my life wondering when the next killer butterfly is going to infect some person who stubbed their toe or something and makes them go on a massacre. But maybe that's just me. We then have an extended montage of Ladybug and Cat Noir waiting around to see whether Monarch's going to attack anytime soon. We see Gabe and Kagami's mum working together on what seems to be a top secret project. And we see Adrian keep on trying to kiss Marinette on the cheek as she continually backs away from it. Man, take a hint, dude. Consent. Learn it. This school needs consent workshops and sex ed workshops pronto, lest these fellas end up on trial in their university days. Like, I get we're supposed to be like, oh, how cute, he likes her. And we're meant to be frustrated with Marinette for backing away, but I just found it really creepy. Really unsettling. Can they stop with this kind of thing? And whilst this is all going on, the citizens of Paris try to show Monarch they're not afraid, but it all slowly dies off as they realize that he hasn't attacked for weeks, so maybe he's gone for good, am I right guys? Surely. 
Well, no, because Ikari goes and immediately attacks and starts smashing up buildings left and right, probably killing hundreds, if not thousands of people. Seriously, if they hadn't reversed this at the end, the death toll would have been catastrophic. So anyway, our heroes transform and they end up getting clapped pretty hard, but they come up with a plan to trap her sword and destroy it to get the Akuma. But as they're about to do just that, she pulls out her trap card and uses multiplication to create multiple identical versions. And they all remain giant, so that would also be pretty frustrating. They struggle against so many of these giant villains at once for a time and more and more buildings get smashed which likely kills thousands more people until Ladybug uses her lucky charm and they conveniently deduce that they only need to beat one to beat the rest. And I don't know, this kind of felt a bit plot armory, but I think I'm okay with it. I think it would have been better than them breezing through all 12 easily. And so the lucky charm is a fishing rod, okay. And then they use said fishing rod to somehow trap the sword so it can be destroyed. And like, what's that fishing line made of? Titanium? Gah. Yeah, I've seen more ridiculous endings, but this one still was a bit out there. Anyway, everything's reversed, and the day is saved, and whoops, turns out Kagami's mum doesn't have the mouse miraculous. Also, turns out she's a double agent for Gabe, and so the plot thickens. And also, it turns out that Gabe's made a new line of interactive rings that totally aren't able to give you miraculous powers after you get akumatized. Ugh, totally not evil. Surely not. Oh, and Amelie was protecting Felix from those big nasty superheroes. And Felix hints that he's more than just a holder to do so. So what's that going to mean? Santi monster? Hmm? Anyway though, that's where we end the episode. With a whole lot of plot development in a very short amount of time. An episode that really sets up a lot more questions than it answers. But I think that's a really good thing. Plant as many seeds as you can early on so you can cultivate all these different storylines throughout the season. This was such a good episode. And I really hope the quality continues on this trajectory throughout the rest of the season. But with that being said, that's the end of the episode. And these were just my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? Like it, hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.